Welcome to Life and Living, I'm Joanna Gagas. At 96 years young, she's still a prolific artist who's changing lives and impacting the next generation of art students. She's Sister Gerardine Muller, an artist and former Caldwell University professor. Welcome to the program, Sister Gerardine. Thank you. Great. It's a pleasure to have you. It's not very often that we get to talk to someone with your level of expertise and someone who's created as much art as you have. Can you tell us a little bit about your background and how you got your start as an artist? My mother was an artist, and um, I was planning to be an artist from high school on. And um, when I began college, I uh, went into science and history as my majors. And then one of the uh, professors notified the sisters that I had this talent. So I was maneuvered into the art field. But uh, my mother was an artist, and I have a love for it from her. When did you know that you wanted to become a nun? When I was three. <laughs> Wait a minute. How does a three-year-old know that they want to well, they pursue that path? I guess I knew I was, I knew about sisters. Uh, my mother was, aunt was a, a nun, so I don't know, but it wasn't serious, of course, but that's what but I But you said of. it at three years old. Yeah. When did that become a reality and a passion for you? Probably uh, in late grade school. I had my, my life figured out. Of and, course you uh, <laughs> did, by the age of, what, 10? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Somehow and, with you, I believe that. <laughs> Then in high school, um, I decided definitely this was my life calling. So you become a nun, and was art always there for you through the process? Yes, my mother, as I said, my mother was an artist and I always loved it. I had planned to go to art high school and um, I ended up in regular high school and uh, heading towards art always. And what about teaching? Was teaching always a part of that for you? I guess it grew from, from the uh, idea of art and teaching. I didn't particularly want to teach, but definitely art. So you started at Caldwell University in 1960. It was Caldwell College back then. Yes. Right? Now Caldwell University. You started there in 1960. Teaching. Teaching, yes. Yes. Talk about the growth of the art program over the years and how you've seen it really develop and blossom? Well, uh, right away in the beginning, it was strong. We had very fine students and uh, from there it developed even further. I ended up with, at the uh, college with about 60, 65 majors in art. And uh, I guess about 70 is what the term is now. But, um, Art was always important to me, and um, we had a, an, a gallery from the very beginning. And uh, having this new gallery now, because it can be locked, is a very important thing. I remember um, borrowing paintings by Robert Henry from one of our alumni. And um, he was very famous in 1913 Armory Exhibit. He did this um, walking nude, and it was supposed to startle everybody at the exhibit. But it so happened that that was the year that Picasso and Matisse and um, all the other uh, fauve artists from Europe entered, the, and they startled the people. But anyway, I had borrowed paintings from this alumna, and um, I, I stayed up all night with the exhibit because it wasn't locked, and I was afraid fire would begin and I would lose this famous nude. So I sat up all night with a That with is dedication exhibit. and passion right there. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> so you mentioned the art gallery. The, the new art gallery was recently named after you. Describe what that honor was for you, what that moment was like for you. Well, uh, it certainly puts me there forever. and. Um, it, it's a, a wonderful feeling because the alumni are coming back, the alumni are coming back for this. They appreciate it probably even more than I do. And, uh, what feel kind of artwork is in there? Is this student artwork or these professional it pieces? It can be. It will be at different times, but mainly it's professional artists. And when you look back, you know, 
Do you point to any moments where you know you touched a student and that light bulb went on and something was triggered in them? Yes. Um, my relation with the student has always been very close. And um, I was very uh, anxious to give them everything I knew, everything I had learned. And, um, and you know quite a bit because you've, pra you've practiced in many different art forms. Can yes. you just laundry list a few of them? <laughs> yes. When I, when I was studying art, I tried to take everything I could because I knew I'd be teaching and I'd have to know it. So as a result, uh, I, I do have a very full background, and I was able to communicate that with the students. You have something in your hand right now, some art that you're still working on, and this is has a, of a very personal nature, right? Yes. What is About this? A little more than 20 years ago, I began making my Christmas cards and doing them as a postcard because, well, the postage was cheaper, but also because it could be passed around, delivered, and people would see it and get the Christmas message. So each year, I think I might have begun with about 40. Now I'm up to 140 and 150. That are so, handmade, personalized yes. Christmas cards. Each one. What each kind one. of thought goes into these cards? Because each one is different. Each, one, each uh, year it's different. And what I usually do is save uh, um, a thought, a saying that means something to me um, with regard to Christmas itself. And then I, I try to feel how it could be expressed. And as a result, this one is um, my favorite, one of my favorites, because lettering and illumination are my favorite media. A joyful, peaceful, blessed, loving Christmas. Yes, I, my, my main um, expertise is in lettering. Well, and that, that's hand lettered. Anyone who gets this in the mail is certain to know not only the love that you feel for them, but the love that you feel for your own expression of clearly deep and personal feelings. Yes. Um, and of course, faith. Right? Yes. And this is this year's card that hasn't gone out yet, and I have about 20 more to finish. So this is a sneak peek yeah. of this year's card. Well, yes. those who are getting this in the mail are certainly going to be touched. Sister Gerardine Muller, artist and former professor at Caldwell yes. University, yes. I can't thank you enough for coming here, thank sharing you. your thank you. life, your art with us. My name is Dr. John Rundbeck. I'm actually the medical director of the Interventional Institute here at Holy Name Medical Center. The peripheral arterial disease actually is extremely common. It's one of the forms of hardening of the artery. As interventional radiologists, we perform minimally invasive image guided procedures. Generally, the procedures we do are alternatives to what would otherwise be major surgery. Almost 80% of those patients can avoid amputation if they're referred for us for these sort of procedures. Holy Name Medical Center in Teaneck, New Jersey. 1-877-HOLY-NAME. Healing begins here. Also brought to you by the Northeast Regional Council of Carpenters and by TD Bank.